Hello, there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. It is March 15th. This is going to be the summary for the Until the Cherry Blossoms Fall campaign against the Historical Gamer. It's funny, actually, we're in turn 99. Next turn will be turn 100. This is my first play by my campaign. And we've definitely learned a lot of lessons, and that's always been the actual aim here. Learning. Learning, learning, learning. We've made mistakes, but to be honest, there hasn't been that many mistakes. A lot of these things can be sorted out and will be sorted out. Uh, we conquered at long last Palamang, which is good news. We are immediately setting out then to conquer the rest of Sumatra. Uh, we do have naval guard units moving out to East Harbin and towards Vinkalin. Uh, Dujambi will be conquered by an infantry regiment as well, so we are moving out very quickly. So in Palambang here, I have established some air power. Uh, we do have some A6720s over here from the Hosho Detachment. That's going to mess with him. He's going to be a little bit unsure about that because he's going to come up with the Hosho Detachment. But they're going to be running escort. Um, I do have the uh, key 43s over here running escort as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually have that. Um, I'll go for we'll go for about six percent cap there. Um, I can't vary up the actual altitude here, so I'm going to go for about. Mm, I could go for what I'm going to do actually is go lower here. Uh, we'll go for about eight k here with the keys. Uh, have these zeros up a little bit higher than eleven. That should work out there. There we go. I do also have here a G3M2 squadron, again, and KUK1 squadron. They're going to be running the naval search out here, which will give us information out into the area over here, the Indian Ocean, which is going to be quite useful for us. But we now have a position here that is actually established. We already have the aviation, we already have... Well, we'll have more supply coming in here soon, uh, but we have the production. I have the refineries turned on, the oil production is turned on, uh, the oil repairs turned off for the time being. But frankly, the actual amount of damage here to the Palant Bank facilities isn't too bad, really. We can definitely make do with that. It could have been worse, it could have been better, but this is not too bad. Uh, we're going to have to spend about 189,000 tons of oil... Sorry, uh, 189,000 189, tons of supply here to repair the oil. Uh, but that's not too bad. 806 refineries ain't bad. It's going to be less... It's not going to be like 189 as such. Uh, because we will actually have the local supply production from the refineries. So it's not going to be that bad. It'll get done. We do have here 130 engineers and 6 engineering vehicles to help us out. We do have 14 uh, flat guns, 59 pieces of artillery here. Flat guns will definitely come in handy, it will help protect Palambang. But I don't think he has a great deal of air power left in Java, to be honest. What I'm doing over here is I've shifted another uh, key 43 squadron over here, which I believe is the 64th Sentai from Kopang. Uh, yes, yeah, 64th. And uh, we're going to be hitting uh, Sotabaya quite hard, we're going to be hitting it harder with a good escort. We're essentially clearing the way now for the invasion of Java, which is going to be coming soon. We do have our forces assembling over here at uh, Bella Papen. I'm actually going to be bringing over these naval guardians over here to Bella Papen and then towards Benjamin and then towards the actual final invasion point uh, in the near future. We do have our first raiding regiment in the Yokosuka, Yokosuka uh, first person left over here as well. Now, they do have some rough target sets over here. The Seminang one isn't uh, going to be their final destination. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually pick a target. What we want to do here is essentially get the reconnaissance in place and then choose where we're going to land. We're going to land in multiple locations at once, essentially, and then try to actually converge together and cut the island in half. And Batavi is likely going to be the point at which he holds out. He has 24 units over there. He has 5 units over here. I don't think it's really going to be a wise idea for him to see Sotabaya as easily. I mean, yes, it's clear terrain and it would fall, but having it fall sooner isn't particularly a great idea either. I mean, this is only times two terrain. I mean, I'm not going to say too much just in case there's, like, eavesdropping, but essentially... Nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. People are good. I mean, there's mountain terrain, jungle rough. There's all sorts of other locations where he could actually make a proper stand. Uh, Batavia is, I mean, it makes sense because obviously it's like the center there is going to have all the supply, which fair enough. But it is vulnerable. It is only times two terrain. It can be dealt with. It's nowhere near as strong as like Clark. It's not as strong as Batan. It has a good, it has a similar number of men as like Batan does. Uh, but the issue with, Bit, well, Batavia is yes, it does have coastal guns, but it doesn't have as mighty uh, coastal guns as uh, Batan does. It's not as quite as defensible there. Uh, we might potentially look into actually clearing the mines from Batavia to bring in natural bombardment capabilities potentially, but it would hurt the amount of refinements we have in the area and the oil in the area. But it is something that we could consider. But I don't think it would be required. I think what we might end up having to do then is uh, have the forces that are based at Bela Papen and uh, Benjamin Marston actually invade and secure the southern half of uh, Java, which is this area over here. 
uh, secure that and then move to the north of Batavia. And then what I could potentially do then after the fall of Singapore is bring in the divisions over here to Java and essentially go, go all in. Really go above board, really throw in a lot of forces there and take it quickly as possible. That might have to be the way we go. Of course we could go for the siege of Batavia, but it's a case of is it worth it having a siege? But that is a potential possibility for us to do that, to go for a sort of siege mentality there. But I'd rather not, I'd rather just conquer Java uh, outright. So yeah, so just clean the way here, which is very nice. They're running naval search, which is good. Uh, we do have the MKB, which is moving towards uh, Bela Papin as well. So we are going to have a hell of a lot of air power to throw Java. We have the air power in more than sufficient capacity here to take Java. But I want to do this, and then I do want to consider potentially moving out into the Indian Ocean, potentially. That would be rather intriguing. We might be able to whip around here, out into the Indian Ocean, potentially, um, possibly, possibly flank Rangoon, perhaps. It does make me wonder, because we don't really know where the Hermes is, we don't know where the British carriers are, but if there's like no actual Royal Navy shipping or American, uh, sorry when I say shipping I mean warships, any real presence in, in terms of like aircraft carriers, it might be, rather than go for Rangoon with the carriers, it might be that we strike towards like Ceylon, strike at Colombo's harbours, and just look for Indian ports with a lot of shipping and strike at them and really try to just hit as much AKs and AKLs as we can, as many tankers, as many APs, just everything else that we can. Um, because I don't imagine he would expect that to a degree. I imagine he would probably expect something at Ceylon, um, but it would be intriguing. So I feel what we're going to do then is really consider landing at Java, covering, covering the landings at Java, then, then moving beyond that. So I do need to make sure we actually have AOs in the area. Uh, we do have forces moving. We can get that done. We do have fuel at, uh, well, and it's, well, we have fuel that can be moved to Copang. I'm thinking of the other game here. But with Palembang, we'll have Ustaven shortly in Manala Benklin, so we can actually move out of here. So that's not too bad. I think what we'd want to do then is secure Coco's Island, Christmas Island, ASAP. Uh, go out there, secure Diego Garcia. Essentially, when we do go out into the Indian Ocean, we really go out there. We go out there hard. We go out there with the capacity to stay in the Indian Ocean. And really try and turn it on him, really. Because as far as we're aware, all the carriers are in the Indian Ocean. Though I imagine there's going to be another American carrier around here at some point, likely in this area now somewhere. Um, the American carriers and the British carriers might be around here somewhere. They could be in this sort of vicinity. They're not too far out. They might be around about here by now, perhaps. It's hard to say. We'll soon see, really. We'll soon see. We do have our natural carriers over here. The, uh, the combined fleet, I should say, actually return into track. The reason being we're going to go ahead and carry out repairs there, carry out uh, just, yeah, just rest, R&R &R essentially. Uh, we don't need to have like an overwhelming presence of uh, shipping in this area, as we do have our power. Uh, but we'll see. It will be a very intriguing one to see how that comes about. Yeah. I have reduced the amount of hate 6k falls over here at Midway. I'm also going to take the Hian, uh, Hian, uh, Hian uh, Maru. And move her out. I'm, I'm currently sending her to Atorofu uh, to make sure she heads out in the right angle, I suppose you could say. Uh, but ultimately, she'll probably head to Panamrishiro Jima. I am going to be mo making a move over here to the Aleutian Islands in the near future, so I could probably have her sent out that way. And she's not required at um, midway right now. I'm going to have the submarine arm your guy shortly, really. But it's not really doing us any good there. Midway is one of those islands where. As I've said multiple times, <laughs> and always will, if it gets attacked, it gets attacked. It really doesn't particularly matter. There's a decent chunk of supply there, and it is it is having some work done there to fortify and to make it a little bit harder for him to take. But essentially, Midway is one of those islands that he should really ignore. Because it's, it, it's one of those of, like, once he moves out beyond Midway, once he's actually launching his character attack, Midway doesn't really matter that much. But if we can fortify it, then that's okay. It's one of those islands where it really only matters in a context. It's it's very much... Sometimes it's the most, most worthless piece of land there is. And then other times it's the most valuable piece of land there is. It, it's always in between somewhere. It's pretty interesting like that. In China, we did defeat the uh, little offensive he launched over here, which is quite nice. So we're going to have these divisions actually march up over here. So we can actually march them out this way or even march them over, uh, over here to the north. I think a couple of divisions would be good in this area to hold this. We do have additional forces moving up the line as well. 59th divisions moving up there as well. Yep. Uh, infantry regiment's going to hold this sort of area. 
we are aware of his forces over here. He may go ahead and do it again, but we'll see about that. We know that we can defeat him here in the clear terrain. He knows that. He doesn't have as much of a force as he did beforehand. Is he going to do it again? Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. It doesn't particularly matter to me, really. All I need to do is just keep him honest in these areas here. We do have our second mixed brigade over here, which is nice. Takes us to 420 assault value, which is handy. So that's good news. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and launch a attack over here. They don't have much fatigue. We'll go over a deliberate attack. The reason being... Um, we do have another division on the way. Another core headquarters is on the way as well. And let's take a look. This first army over here, actually... I'm going to have them put into combat mode, and then ideally they'll still help while moving. They should still help being in combat mode. We do have these fellows in combat mode as well, so it should help us out. But what I want to do then is uh, force him back over here. Try and force him back. Because we're in wooded rough terrain right now. What I w Well, sorry, I'm looking at wrong. Uh, we're in ru uh, wooded rough terrain right now. What I want to do is force him back over here, then force him out of that wooded rough terrain to the type 2 terrain over here at uh, Quailin. If I can do that, then that's, that's worthwhile doing. I don't want to wait here and allow him to build the fortifications. We'll probably not win this battle, but I'm going to try to force him back. And if we can't force him back, we'll force him to use supplies and then beat him that way, really. We do have additional forces moving out there, which is good. I'm trying to surround the uh, forces over here. Probably just have to converge, really. But he's not going to find any supply of electrician. And, um, yeah, there's, there's not really much there of any value to us. So, well, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is what it is there. Uh, it's hard to try and surround forces in China, especially in southern China, it's quite difficult there. But indeed. And we are moving our forces out over here, then. Uh, Ching Ting. Uh, sorry, not Ching Ting, to Taiyun. Uh, well, we do have forces moving there. So I'm having them march on there. Obviously, the uh, rest of them will arrive and move on there. God, I'm so tongue tied. I'm so tongue tied lately, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, so over here, then, at Port Moresby, I'm not going to attack today. I'm going to allow the supply to actually build up. You can see that we are under the uh, supply required. We'll probably have it next turn, but I'd like to make sure that we definitely have it when we do launch the attack, just in case. Uh, Moving um, via fast transport over here. Elements of the 4th Air Division to Fiat. It's going to take some time to do that. I'm moving some engineers from Gazmata to Buna. So I can go ahead and begin to build up an actual airfield over there at Buna. I move in an AV as well as two patrol, but sorry, three patrol boats and an AG over here to Buna as well. Uh, so I can actually start a patrol out here from Buna as well, make sure it stays clear of enemy submarines. Um, something I'm doing over here, right, she's uh, uh, something I'm looking forward to is I'm sending out a fast transport. It's carrying two units over here, the rest of the first engineers and the uh, seventh independent SLF. What I'm going to do with them is actually have them moved out to capture this base over here at Tadapol. And then, uh, ideally, when we do take Port Moresby, and I probably will wait for us to capture that. They'll move pretty quickly. It might take them about two days or so to get there. But I think I'll wait for that base to fall, and then we'll launch the attacks at Port Moresby. And then, ideally, ideally, we'll be able to force them to surrender, really. Which is exactly what I want there. If we force them to surrender at Moresby, then that is a big victory. It just means that, frankly, we have no more need to actually chase them, which is really nice. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we're getting things moving at uh, Bangkok. I'm waiting for my forces to recover and build up. What we're going to be doing really is at Bangkok. I'm going to have bombers moved out there to Bangkok as well in time. Uh, but what we'll do then is we'll bomb Rangoon at night. Sweep, uh, yeah, just bomb Rangoon at night. Obviously, have like a bit of an escort there. Uh, bomb it at night. Bomb it in the day. Sweep, sweep, bomb, sweep. Night and day, essentially. Night and day. As hard as we can, really and try to blitz through his air power. He does have a lot of fighters, but the thing is, he might not actually have them running at night. So if we can cause damage at night, he's going to have to then put cap at night there. And then he doesn't know how much we're going to do that, but as long as we can keep him honest, really. But as long as we can force him to split his cap between night and day, that's going to hurt him. He's defending Rangoon, but the thing is with Rangoon, he doesn't know when we're going to be coming, and he's not... He's just defending. He's not being aggressive. He's not being defensive. So we can sort of choose when we attack. He can't really choose when he defends. He's always going to have to defend in some capacity because he never knows when the attack is going to come, which is good. Uh, there's obviously advantages to defending because he's, he's only able to defend the one hex. He can he can do that. But there's also disadvantages as well of being on the defensive rather than actually having the capability to fight back to. So it is as it is. 
We see two units over here. I'd like to actually go ahead and get some reconnaissance on those actually in the near future. I do have a unit of Babs over here, which I have just got out of the area. Alright, let's see. Let's get these sorted out then. So I'm going to run some reconnaissance over this unit over here, because I really, really want that Hex. If I can take that Hex, I'd be very happy there. Alright, let's get these guys going then. So we do have reconnaissance over Rangoon, which is good. What I'm going to do is run reconnaissance over these bases over here, essentially. Um, I think what we would do then, uh, when it did come to breaking Rangoon, is uh, I don't think we'd go straight to Rangoon. What I'd rather do is actually march forces to the north, really. So I'm going to run reconnaissance over these bases in the north and really get an idea where his actual units are right now. So we'll do that over time. There we go. They're moving back there to satisfy the uh, garrison requirement. Um, really, I need to get more garrisons, but uh, we'll sort that out. I do have forces over here. Tokyo that have been loaded. They've just been loaded. And what I'm going to do then is actually have them sent to Takao. 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 And get them distributed properly. Um, wouldn't be a bad idea to have some sent out here to actually garrison over here. The issues with the bloody Philippines is you have to garrison it, which is not exactly great, but we'll have to do that. Uh, but yeah, things are going well enough. We'll get underway. We should really be able to expediate things soon, which is very nice. Like over here at Singapore, uh, we're going to wait until we have our fatigue down here for the 18th and the 5th Division, as well as the Imperial Guard Division, and just in general rest everybody before we go for the uh, ideally final attack. We are going to continue to bomb Singapore, we're going to keep bombing the airfield there, and really drive that damage up so it doesn't have the capacity to repair. Um, I think the first attack with the 38th Division will not be a... Uh, it won't conquer. It won't conquer uh, Singapore, I'd imagine, but it will... It will destroy those fortifications, I'd imagine, and ideally... Ideally, the attack after that would be the one to seal the deal there, really. But there we go. So, nice say a big thank you for watching there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to my viewers, thank you to my patrons, and thank you as well to THG for being such a good opponent. We'll go ahead here and make a save and then send the turn off. So, much ongoing. The industry is an interesting one. Uh, like, we do have quite a lot of fuel actually at Marie, which I'm going to be getting sent out really <laughs> as soon as I can, really. We'll get that sent out to Indochina, and then, well, to Cameron Bay is where I'm going to have it sent. And then from Cameron Bay, I'm actually going to have it sent by a uh, high-capacity, high-speed tanker back to Japan. We'll get that fuel moving back to Japan. What I really want to, well, actually, no, I, I think I'm going to move the fuel to begin with at first, get that fuel out there. But I probably want to begin moving oil more than anything else, because I do have, I mean, there's a lot of 14k units, 38k fuel. I'll get the fuel out, we'll get it up moving, really. We'll see, we'll see. I'm probably better off sending oil back to Japan before fuel, really. Hmm. Because we have refineries back in Japan. Like, I don't need the refineries out here. As such. I need that oil production, so we need the oil to go back to Japan. Build up the oil stocks. And it's the oil stocks that will keep us going throughout the war, really. If my oil, uh, oil stocks deplete, then having fuel doesn't really help as much because we lose out on a lot of the actual... Well, we lose out on refineries then, but refineries also do produce supply as well. So that's why we need the oil, we need that. Definitely need that. Uh, so there we go. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Uh, let's go with Sapphire Blue. Hmm. Sapphire Blue Shapes, then we'll go with that then. <laughs> these these names really don't mean anything, but I'm going to try and take them <laughs> by surprise. Make him think that something's up. That's the uh, key there. And there we go. Thank you for watching, then, ladies and gentlemen. I shall see you in the next episode. Goodbye for now.